If I asked you what a donghao was, chances are you'd reiterate that question back to me, because unlike Japanese animation, the cartoons that come from China aren't readily known, yet due to the struggling schedule demands from the anime industry, a lot of anime is outsourced to China. This has allowed a kinship to form between the two nations, and with this brings partnership, a bond, a connection, which strangely enough, whether it was through chance or design, is the theme that runs through this movie. A partnership, a bond, a connection between Japan and China's newest stars, giving us three stories about the fragility of youth and that from the opening note of the piano captures the heart and transports the mind, reminding you of what it meant to be young. My name is Isla and this is my review of Howliners and Comics Wave Films Flavours of Youth. This is a movie told in three parts. Each of the stories is a different tale about a different person living their life somewhere in China. Yet what connects them all together is this idea of youth and what we all take from it. In our first story, we listen to a man reminisce about his younger years through his love of rice noodles. In the second, we watch a woman struggle with the idea of aging. And in the third, we hear a tale of love and regret. Dependent on your position in life, you'll probably feel a connection to one story stronger than the other. For me, it was the first story, and while I grew up in Scotland thousands of miles away from tasting the golden soup of this man's youth, I did grow up eating bowls of liquid gold of my own. Very much like Ming sat across from my own grandma, but it was bowls of lentil soup in front of us and over buttered bread. The warm, familiar feeling still clings to me whenever I eat it now as an adult. I'm reminded of cold winters and hot summers. I'm transported back to a time when growing up was a future unthought of, and when my youth was very much in full swing. So watching this short with its beautiful music and gorgeous scripting took me back to my grandma's table, to the heat of the steam and the sound of her voice, reminding me that while I'll eat this soup all of my life, it'll never taste like hers. It'll be my youth, but I'll never be my youth. I find that feeling quite powerful, that in 25 minutes the directors at Howl Liners could have me in tears through reminiscing. It's quite a skill to have your audience connected to your characters and story when you have such a small amount of time to tell your tale, yet what Flavours of Youth does so well is establish a sense of nostalgia. And while I'm not a model and I didn't grow up exchanging cassette tapes with my crush, I have felt these emotions that these characters felt in some way throughout my life. You don't hear their stories for long, but it's enough time to remind you of your time, because they're normal, realistic, honest stories. They're accentuated by the Makoto Shinkai-esque animation that Comex Waves is famous for, and while this is not a Makoto Shinkai film in any way, it feels like the movie was born from his influence. The way he captures light, the placement of his cameras, the transitions between his scenes and the emotions he envelops, all of this is ever present in Flavours of Youth, and I would akin it to a homage rather than a direct copy, because it doesn't quite capture the memento beauty of a Shinkai work. There are moments of course, but truly no one makes a movie like Shinkai. But the directors at Howl Liners have tried to develop their own individuality, and in that they've succeeded, showing us that through the power of mundanity, food, clothing, housing, we find our greatest connections. Of course, if you start to peel apart the framework built on the foundations of a certain feature by Shinkai, then you'll find flaws in its design. Some of the shorts are stronger than others, and while the comics art style might hold this movie in place, look a little deeper and you can clearly see the shorts were all worked on by separate teams, creating a disjointedness in its animation. But despite its faults, I still left this experience with a smile on my face, charmed by the Japanese and English voice acting that add depth, especially in the long monologue sequences. Don't go into Flavours of Youth expecting the next Your Name, because there's only one man that can make that. However, it is the beginning of something new, a chance for China to show that they can tell stories as beautiful and as wonderful in animated form like Japan. A sweet and delicate reminder of what it means to grow up, cling on, and eventually, let go.